Something about this feels awfully familiar. This is like deja vu. Another EMG gun. I am wearing the same shirt. Yeah. EMG is continuing its Sharps Brothers lineup with yet a new gun design, the Warthog. Coming in three different lengths and two different colors, the latest Warthog is a continuation of said line of AEGs made by our friends, yes, of course, at EMG. It feels like it was just yesterday that I reviewed the Hellbreaker, and all of this feels, well, awfully familiar. Today, we're gonna look at the Warthog. There seems to be a few differences, but let's see if those are just skin deep. Hey guys, so I was watching Tim's review of the SGR-12 the other day, and the whole word refurbished has been on my mind for a while, and boom, along came EMG and this gun. The latest to the Sharps Brothers lineup, the Warthog. Right away, you're gonna see some notable differences between this one and the previous one I reviewed, being that this one, with its namesake, has a Warthog on the lower receiver, whereas the Hellbreaker that I talked about last time had a shark face inspired by the World War II fighter, the P-40 Warhawk. So, okay, the gun comes in two different colors. What a shocker. One is black and the other one, you guessed it, it's tan. But for a black gun, the finish on this one is really good, actually. It's almost a powdered finish. I am thoroughly impressed. The complete front end of the gun already is different from the last one. The rail is an M-lock rail instead of the previous key mount, and instead of using a muzzle brake, there is an amplifier. Now, this is the longest version of this particular gun, and it comes in three different lengths. The 15, which is the one you see, a 10-inch, and a 7-inch. Moving towards the middle portion of the gun, of course you will see its signature Warthog motif right here on the lower receiver. From there, the gun is kind of the same in the fact that it's not ambidextrous like the previous, so selector sadly only on one side. However, it does come with this very nice flat face trigger, which moves us towards the pistol grip. Now, not a fan of the angles on this grip like the previous, but it seems to be less angular, if you may, so a little bit more comfortable to hold. This one though, yes, it is a little slick, so if y'all got sweaty palms, make sure you have some gloves on so it doesn't slip out of your hands. Moving towards the rear of the gun now, you'll see the biggest difference, which is this particular stock. Looks-wise, I'm neutral on it. It's not the best looking, but it's definitely not bad looking. It's got more than enough space for you to put all of your batteries and accessories inside, and you can simply access that by unlatching it right here to see all your space and revealing the small Tamiya type connector. Only gripe about this stock is that it takes a bit of time to wear in or break in the extension. So it's a little stiff at first but it's not a deal breaker. The hop up, you guys might be interested to find out where it is. If you've guessed right here, you'd be right. Adjust for more or less hop. And best thing of all is you can send the bolt back forward with the bolt release. My final gripe is this. Cool looking gun, super lackluster looking magazine. Man, this feels like deja vu. Very standard, 300 round, high cap mag. But guys, it's 2017, so you know what? If you don't like this, this could work. Or even this. Huh, you never know. Now let's go see how it feels. So the gun has a So the gun has both an EFCS and a MOSFET, so you can expect great trigger response as well as programmability to three different firing modes. Semi-auto, full auto, as well as three round burst. Trigger response, pretty good. And the gun points just as good as the last one. These front and rear sights are low profile and non-obtrusive, and I don't know if you've listened or picked up the sound coming out of this amplifier. It is much louder 
than its predecessor. Let's go chrono the thing. I'm using 0.2 gram BBs and an 11.1 lipo. Here we are at the warehouse. I'm standing roughly 20 or so meters from our target down range about to shoot the old warthog. And today to help me is, yes, the drum mag, because you know, reloading is overrated. Let's take a look at that spread. I'm gonna have to say that the cheek on the stock is superior than the one from before. Let's take a look at those results. So from our distance about 20 meters away, it did pretty good. But then again, it is only 20 meters or so away. That's the spread, and let's go back to the studio. Man, after talking about this gun so much, and you guys really wanna know why I feel like I've done this before, why don't you click right here on the screen to see the review I did for the Hellbreaker. Or if you're interested, you can click right here to see the review I did for the Grey. It's all Deja vu. Okay, I think we can say that the guts of the gun is pretty much the same as the Hellbreaker from before. But like what I said in the Scorpion Evo video, don't fix what ain't broke, right? If the SGR12 is like the Toyota Corolla, keeping with the refurbished thing in mind, this one would be like a Volkswagen Golf. Every few years they come up with a new refresh, but under the hood, it's that same reliable golf you've come to depend upon. So, what do you guys think of the old Warthog? Are you guys Volkswagen Golf owners? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you want cool products like this and many more, don't forget to check out our online store at www.redwolfairsoft.com. My name is Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Red Wolf TV. Have a good one, guys.